Ezra Klein tweeted something today that caught my eye and that I immediately retweeted. We could phase out of lockdown safely if the federal government had done the work on testing and tracing. We could phase out of lockdown safely if the federal government had done the work on testing and tracing. We could phase out on the lockdown. It's the kind of thing that you could write a lot more about it, but you really don't have to write a lot more about it. That pretty much tells the story. Dr. Tom Frieden, the former director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, appeared before a House subcommittee today to share his plan for controlling the spread of coronavirus and responsibly, very gradually, reopening some economic activity. We're conditioned to think in terms of dichotomies, A versus B. But in this case, open versus closed is not a dichotomy. It's more accurate to think of a dimmer switch or a dimmer dial than an on-off switch with gradations to avoid undue risk. Another false dichotomy is between public health and economic security. In fact, the very best way to get our economy back is to control the virus. And economic stability is critically important to the public's health. Joining our discussion now is Klein. He's the co-host of Vox. Uh, co-founder of Vox, host of the podcast, The Ezra Klein Show, and author of the recently released book, Why We Are Polarized. Uh, and Ezra, this is one of those moments uh, that reminds me of that, uh, that slogan they had up on the wall in the Clinton presidential campaign in 1992, uh, it's the economy, uh, stupid. Uh, they just wanted, they, they, to them, every issue came back to the economy. And it seems to me that no matter which way we want to look at this, we're always coming back to the virus. I mean, even the discussion we just had with Better O'Rourke, long term, the best way to get those people fed is to get this virus crushed so that they can get back to work, so that they can be able to afford food, so that they can get out of the, out of the line uh, to the food bank. And, it, it, and every single economic discussion about what's going on here, if it's realistic, comes back to how do you crush the virus? We have made this so much harder by being so bad at it. I, I can't stress that enough. Look, this was always going to be hard, but it didn't need to be this complicated. And the way it wouldn't have been this complicated is if at the beginning, when we the people made this tremendous sacrifice, economic, social, personal, to go into lockdown, the federal government had had an actual plan with time frames on it, which they followed, in which they actually got the country ready for what was going to come on the other side. There are two words to talk about strategy here that I think are really important when thinking about this, security and predictability. You want, on the one hand, security in health, and you want it in the economy. And for a while, those are going to require unusual things from us. In the, in the economic dimension, there's going to have to be a tremendous amount of government support of the economy, of wages in, in particular, to say nothing of businesses themselves, in order to allow people to do what they need to do in order to be secure from the virus. But the other thing you need is predictability, and that is particularly true in the economy, right? We need to say... Six months from now, we will be doing X. Here's where we expect to be. And that's also true in what we're doing with the virus. People are not going to lock down forever if they don't believe the time is being used well and if they don't see what's coming on the other end of it. The word quarantine comes from an Italian word for 40 because it was 40 days originally um, when, we, when we were doing this many, 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 many years ago. The federal government completely has failed to execute a plan. And so what they've been in is an incredibly costly holding pattern that they are now no, that they are now no longer willing to pay the cost of. It is the most profound and far-reaching failure of political leadership probably in our lifetime. Yeah, I, I want to go back to a tweet uh, that you did in, in April, end of the month, April 29th. You said, Donald Trump does not want to be in charge of any of this. He wants to play president on TV. He doesn't want responsibility for governance in time of crisis. And in every way he can, he's refusing to do that job and lashing out at those who ask him to do it. And, and Ezra, that's, that's, what's, that's what we're seeing in the point you just made about the, the guidelines being announced of, you know, we, we want to close things down. We want people to socially distance the White House guidelines. Uh, but the, the, after issuing the guidelines, they had no strategy whatsoever on how to achieve something beneficial during that time period. It's like the guidelines came out and they just sat there and hoped. 
guidelines are not a plan. And also the president never followed the guidelines. I mean, to this moment is not following mm -hmm. the guidelines, is routinely contradicting them. The whole thing is wild. But think about a hypothetical here. Imagine this was the Obama administration. Imagine it was the Hillary Clinton administration. You remember, as I do, um, Lawrence, just a couple weeks ago in, I think we now call it Stimulus 3.5, that it was described as a concession to Democrats there was $25 mm -hmm. billion dollars and a mandate to have a national testing strategy. Can you imagine a Clinton administration on this? How desperate they would be for the money to do testing, how many bullet points their testing strategy would have? A normal federal government, and not by the way, not just a Democratic one. If Governor DeWine was president, if Mitt Romney were president, if Marco Rubio were president, they would be desperate to have a plan here, the financing for a plan and a structure for a plan, and to be carrying it out so that when they ran for re-election um, this year, they could say, we saved the country this. But Donald Trump, the reason that was a democratic concession, which it actually was, was Donald Trump does not want to have responsibility for testing. He has wanted from the beginning to put this entire thing on states and cities, which do not have the resources, the power, the coordination capacity to solve the problems in the testing supply chain, not to mention to get the innovation we need to get the sort of 20, 25, 35 million um, tests a day that we will ultimately need to open up safely in the absence of a vaccine. He has never wanted this. He wants to be the head of state. He enjoys doing these press conferences, which is why he keeps doing them, despite the fact that they've often been bad for him. And now as people are finally pulling him off of it, but he has never wanted to do the hard work of daily governance, the grind of the meetings, the actual pushing of it. And we're all suffering for it. Ezra Klein, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.